And also, if you ever wonder where the term graveyard shift came from, it's because his families would hire someone to sit by the grave for a few days afterwards to make sure the person buried below or there was actually, in fact, dead. I know you're gonna dig this. Get, get, get funky with me. Today here I am in Bonaventure Cemetery here in Savannah, Georgia. If you ever get the chance to visit Savannah, I highly recommend it. It's a great city and so beautiful. I mean, look, these live oaks are all over the place. I think these are live oaks, some of these, all over the city. And Bonaventure Cemetery has been around since like 1846 and it's a very historic cemetery. And of course, Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil, John Cusack, Kevin Spacey, they're in that movie, a great movie, directed by Clint Eastwood. Had a lot to do with this movie. There was a famous bird, uh, bird girl sculpture that was featured on the book, on the cover of the book. That uh, statue is no longer here. It's been moved into a downtown, into the museum, uh, one of the museums there. And it's because people were trampling on the grave and trying to get a good picture and that sort of thing. So it was moved, the statue. And there's someone else here that I'm here to visit though. Little Gracie Watson. And I'm in her area and then I'm gonna show you some cool things about the cemetery and tell you some things about it. It's very, very, um, at night it's creepy. I've been here before uh, and I don't get creeped out, but it's got, you know, with the trees and the all the well, this, it can get a little creepy at night here. I actually, in my first year of YouTube, which was 2017, I came out here and did a whole video about the uh, story behind Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. Johnny Mercer, the singer, uh, he's buried here, I believe. Yes, he is. But I came out here and I did a bunch of uh, graves. I went to the house, uh, the house and stuff. Never really got to put it together the way I wanted to. I was very green back then. So one day I'll be back here to do a story about Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. But for now, we're gonna take a look for Gracie, little Gracie's grave, I'll tell you about her. I'm actually getting, uh, I don't have any um, service, but there's a tour guide over there I could ask. I'm getting confused because there was another grave I visited in another cemetery that had a similar story and it looks exactly the same. I think that's the one in Kentucky in Louisville, I believe. But a lot of people come out to Gracie Watson's grave, so I should be should be able to find her pretty easily. But I'm getting conf I'm getting really this road right here it looks so familiar that I may have been to Gracie Watson's grave before. I may have come out before. Like when I was here and knew about her, but I don't remember. Ah, that's called, I filmed a lot of videos for YouTube and I might be getting a little older. Oh, look at this. I am looking for Gracie Watson's final resting place and it's surrounded by a fence like this, but this is not hers. We're gonna, you'll see how impressive hers is.
Wow. So there are modern burials all around, and this is the historic part right here. And just where those people are, past there is the historic part. It's a huge cemetery. But there are still burials to this day here. I think I was going in the absolute wrong direction. I think she's right over here. It's probably where everybody is standing. That makes sense. I'll walk through here. Gracie Wat Watson was six years old. Her father was the general manager of the Plasky House, which was a hotel here in Savannah. It's now a Regents Bank. Um, and uh, apparently, well, she was a very sweet, Yes, I have been here before. I recognize all of this. I recognize that grave. That is crazy that I've actually came out to her grave, but and I filmed it and never put it up. And I'm actually so familiar with this story, but maybe it's because I, I'm having some weird deja vu. That's what, yeah, I can see the back of statue and I remember being here. Wow. I told I remember being here for the Midnight Garden, the Garden of Good and Evil, but I do not remember coming here for Gracie Watson. She was supposedly a very sweet, precocious girl, and she played with the hotel guests, and they loved her. And she did, uh, developed pneumonia at the age of six, very sadly passed away. And apparently her father went into a very, very deep depression. And yeah, this is not, I'm seeing the people by the fence, and I remember standing there waiting for other people to leave so I could take photographs last time and video. Five years ago, six years ago? Six years ago five and a half and so she's interred here at first with a simple stone and uh, like a headstone and her father I think I said fell into a deep depression when was leaving Savannah but he commissioned an artist to do a life-size sculpture of her and it's here and they had to put up a fence because so many people going up to the sculpture or touching it and things like that but people come here and leave toys and all sorts of things especially toys for little Gracie and apparently she haunts, I've heard she haunts three different places. Downtown Savannah, in the historic square, runs around. Uh, the former location of the, of the hotel, which is the Regions Bank. You hear a girl giggling and whispering, running around. And this cemetery. I mean, there's lots of haunted stories about cemeteries, of course. But this is one of the more famous ones. The apparition of a little girl can be seen here at night, especially. But yeah, this is her grave right here. Wow, I've been here. Crazy. They never recovered from their grief and ultimately returned to their family home in New England, leaving Lacey alone in Savannah. However, she was confusing. So if I can tell you about the statue, it's hard to see, but her eyes are pointed skywards toward heaven, and it's life size, and that's a tree trunk that is uh, cut short, which represents a life cut short. Yes, you got it up for Easter. I'm sorry, bro. I'm good. <laughs> So I did bring a little toy um, I found at a store not too far from here, Disney Princess Mashems. Now I was thinking to myself, open it, it's got a little princess inside, and then I thought, well, let's Gracie see it like this, and there's a lot of kids around me right now, actually, and if one of them ends up taking it and knows how to open it, probably no faster than I would, I have no clue. Um, they're welcome to take it, but it's for Gracie, so I'm hoping it's left behind.
And yeah, inside it's got a little princess, which is apparently exactly what she was somewhat like. And if you heard that, the woman was listening to some sort of podcast or something. Maybe someone else's YouTube channel. They've come out here before. I don't know. And saying that they, yeah, they built the rod iron fence because people were rubbing her nose for good luck. That's going to just give wear and tear on the um, statue after so many years. So that's why the fence is around here. You don't see many of them with fences. Rest in peace, Gracie. If only she knew how famous she became afterwards. She was a little entertainer. Maybe that's what she would have grown up to be. So this is the uh, historical park. Gracie's right over there. You can't, you can't miss when you drive through the cemetery where Gracie would be. There's a few other uh, graves. Uh, well, one specifically that I know has what I'm looking for. And I think these people are all gathered around at the grave I'm looking for because sometimes back in the 1800s we'll say and it was around the 18 late uh, first of all there's a, if you see a little cribs that represents a child usually and in the late 1800s children had a 54% chance of not making it of passing away before uh, well, age two years, hard to read. 54% chance of making it past the age of like three or four. Oh, Mercer, is this, I don't think this is, uh, I don't think it is. A famous singer, John Mercer, maybe not. So that's what uh, you'll see a few of them around. Uh, I was waiting for those two to leave here, and they did. Now, this is what's creepy and very interesting is you know the phrase saved by the bell? I'm sure you've heard it before. It actually originates from uh, people when they were buried, some of them fell into such a deep coma before their death. And had this low pulse. People assumed they were dead, but after grave robbers and ex exhumations and things like that, I just saw the bell. Um, they noticed scratch marks and claw marks on the inside of the casket. So they realized a fair amount of people were buried alive, and a fair amount of people were buried alive here. So what they did was they tied a string to a bell to the person's finger. And there's a bell right there. So if they, you know, were still alive, ring the bell. Hence, saved by the bell. So this is the grave of Charles Mills, and he has a bell, and there are a few of them here with it. And also, if you ever wonder where the term graveyard shift came from, it's because his families would hire someone to sit by the grave for a few days afterwards to make sure the person buried below or there was actually in fact dead graveyard shift also why did they have wakes they had wakes after someone passed away just to make sure that person was really gone so they were hold wakes usually in somebody's house too because they didn't want their relative, well, I'm sure they did want their relative waking up, but they didn't want them waking up, you know, underground. And the term dead ringer refers to if someone resembles a deceased person that's just come back from the dead. That's where that term comes from. And if you've spent a lot of time in a cemetery, like I have, you've seen obelisks. That's what those are called. The taller, 
See that one over there? And then this one here. And guess what? The bigger they are, that means the more money you had. Don't think dirty. It means the more money you have. The sign of wealth. Another sign of wealth right here. And I'm gonna go just walk over here for a second to show you. If the lettering is raised on a grave, it's a sign of wealth. If it's engraved into the, into the stone, I mean, you may still have money. But this, this means you're wealthy. Now, I believe I saw that Mercer, I'm stepping over all, there's a lot of um, branches in the ground. I believe I'm gonna pass Johnny Mercer actual grave right around here. Um, let me see. Oh, there's another grave I want to show you. I believe Johnny Mercer is somewhere around here. Famous singer and um, co-founder of Capitol Records. Which is very interesting. Where is Johnny Mercer? Yeah, I had to kind of hop over here. Not sure which is Johnny's. Uh, There's a little child. You know, in the soundtrack of the movie. <clears throat> Caricature of him there and some of his lyrics. Buddy, I'm a kind of poet and I've got a lot of things to say. Come rain, come shine, the days of wine and roses, hooray for Hollywood, one for my baby, Skylark, title, song titles, that old black magic, Johnny Mercer. Now off in the distance, you're gonna see a, why am I whispering so, I mean, now off in the distance, I've been whispering a lot because there's so many people out and around, but they're all much louder than I am. Wealthy. But I'm going over to that pyramid, and I gotta tell you about that interesting, interesting pyramid that's here. It's wild. This gentleman's telling the story of the pyramid. We look there, there's a list of people that are entombed there. The Mongin family, Mongin family, John Mongin, he's a steamboat operator, very wealthy. And here's a river here, and it was, there was, this pyramid was actually originally located on Dalfowski, Dalfowski Island in South Carolina where the family was entombed. But you'll notice, I'm gonna go a little closer, the pry marks, because there are family heirlooms buried inside. So those are pry marks of people that broke into it. So in 1990, people broke in and stole the family heirlooms and all the family. They took the remains. So that crypt is empty. All those people that were buried there on that, that are listed on that uh, sign. Oh, I guess I can walk right up. There's a thing. You can see people come out here, leave rocks. Oh, I didn't realize there was a gate that opened here. This is empty. They broke in. You see all the tours going by. It's crazy here today. Um, and you're getting a tour. Hopefully, you're sitting back on your couch watching. Hope you're getting a good feel for this place. And yeah, you see those Primarchs. Isn't that wild? And I just took a look through the keyhole. You cannot see anything. But apparently it's a very haunted crypt. The souls that were entombed found their way here. Because this was in South Carolina. Like I said, they towed it down the river. 
And they couldn't go any further. Bonaventure Cemetery said, we'll take it. I'm not sure what they were, where they were going to. But, oh, I think, no, they were coming to Bonaventure Cemetery, but they, they, they got as far from here to here because there's the river. And they said, this is good because it's, I mean, look at it. It's going to be pretty, pretty heavy. And I do want to start by saying that when you find somebody off their own in a family plot, it usually implies they do I've noticed the tour guides. Some are really into it. Some are just not the best. This guy is awesome. He's given a lot of information. He seems very happy with his job, what he's doing. Another little cradle grave. One thing... You'll see sometimes, I haven't seen it yet, but I've seen him in other centers. I know it's a lot here. If you see a family plot, you see one family member that's kind of off to the side or far away from the rest of the family members. It usually means they did something bad or something the family didn't approve of. So they're still in the plot, they're just not, you know, exactly with the family. Look at these graves. Where, yeah, these old Roxy graves. I'm not sure what these are. They're by the river. Isn't that wild? Well, yeah. We've got the, these aren't graves. This is to make sure you don't drive off the side of the road into the river here. Wow. All right. Well, that was a quick little, well, I'm not sure how quick. It seemed like I was talking for a long time. And I got to figure out where I parked. I parked near Gracie. Left my car kind of just on the side. Uh, there's a big cemetery. I'm not sure where my car is. Is that the same one I was showing before? The really tall one? I don't think it is. Hmm. Oh, Conrad Aiken. Famous poet. I just tripped over literally the same set of branches that I tripped on earlier. Because I, I remember them, and I saw the other ones. I said, oh. <sighs> so I think I'm parked down here. Oh boy. Well, it wouldn't be the first time I've been lost in a cemetery, that's for sure. But it would. <sighs> no, it wouldn't be, actually. I think my car. Maybe they towed it. No, I don't think. Oh, there it is. It's all the way down there. Okay. <laughs> my goodness. Beautiful. Okay. Oh, we're passing Gracie again. Rest in peace, Gracie. Good night, Gracie. Okay. I hope you enjoyed this quick tour around Bonaventure Cemetery here in Savannah. If you. Uh, love historical places, if you love cemeteries, if you love sculptures, if you love art. I mean, it's, a li it's an art museum, almost. It's, it's like an outdoor art museum. It's gorgeous. Come on out here. Okay, thanks for watching. Peace out.